let's move to some more advanced topics now and something that is closely related to recording, flex. In Logic Pro we have two types of flex, pitch and time. The one that we will be looking at in this video is flex time or editing and you'll see how helpful it is to make your recordings much tighter or correct a few mistakes. Before we move on, uh, flex time relates to audio only, not MIDI. And I also want to mention that this video is an introduction to Flex, so I'll cover what it is, what it does, and explain what the different algorithms are. If you already know all of that and you want to see Flex in action, you can skip to the next video where we start working with uh, polyphonic mode and Flex markers. So, the way Flex works is uh, we select an algorithm, which is track-based, and depending on what we have selected, we can manipulate the timing or pitch by using compression or expansion. We can also speed up or slow down our recordings. What will influence the result depends on how good or bad your recording is. If you have a bad recording, and by bad I mean something that is terribly out of time, then the end result when using flex will have a lot of artifacts. Uh, artifacts are unwanted sonic material that result from either editing, such as splitting at the non-zero crossing point, we have already talked about that in a previous video, or by sound manipulation, such as flex time. If your recording is decent though, when flex time, uh, then flex time will be unnoticeable with zero or very few artifacts and can actually hide them pretty easily. So, to view flex, not turn it on, just to view it, you can click on this little button up here, or you can press Command and F, as in flex, or if you like taking extra steps, you can open it through the menu, so you go all the way up to edit and show flex pitch time. Now once you do, two options will be added on each audio track. The track flex button, which allows you to turn flex on and off, and the algorithm list. Now a small note, as you can see, the, the tracks are in pre-fader freeze mode, and when you turn flex for any track, then it will automatically switch to source only. So let's turn flex on. Now let's look at the available modes. If you leave it on automatic, Logic which will choose one of the following algorithms based on what it determines is the best for the material you have. So let's quickly look at the different algorithms. Let's start with monophonic. And as you can guess, it is to be used with melodic instruments that can only play one note at a time. Monophonic synths, uh, bass lines, brass instruments, etc. Now this mode doesn't deal very well with reverb. So make sure that you use it with dry instruments. And if your recordings have a lot of reverb, even though your instrument or material you have might be monophonic, you might want to switch to polyphonic instead, because it handles reverb a bit better. And we also get one parameter uh, here, percussive. All of the parameters for its algorithm can be enabled from the track region. By percussive, I don't mean just percussion, but anything that is played in a percussive manner, so plucked guitar or bass. Uh, if you're working with strings or winds or instruments that don't have a percussive element, then have this one at off because it might produce some glitches. Now let's skip the next two and go to polyphonic. And as you can guess from the name, this is a good mode to use when you're working with uh, polyphonic material. So anything that plays more than one note, guitars, piano, polysynths, uh, choirs, etc. Now mind you, this is the most intensive mode so if you have lots of polyphonic flexes and lots of plugins, your processor might not be able to handle it. Well, some information for the synthesis geeks out there. The way this mode works is by using phase vocoding. That is a form of synthesis that takes a digital sound file, analyzes it, and then resynthesizes it by the phase vocoder. Uh, this mod mode also has one parameter we can use, complex and that will add extra transients in the recorded material. Now let's have a look at slicing. To understand uh, the difference between slicing and the other two modes we've talked about so far, 
I think it's better to demonstrate. Actually, let's go down here and choose slicing. So, or actually monophonic. So, in monophonic or polyphonic, when you make a transient marker and move a note, and we'll have a look at all of this and how to do everything in the next video. I just want to show you the difference now. So when you move a node, it does so by compressing and expanding the material. So let's add a few markers here. So let's make this one bigger. So when I move this node, let's say I grab this one and move it to the left, you can see that the material on the right of my transient expands, while the material on the left gets compressed, you know, and vice versa. Now with slicing, uh, no time compression or expansion is applied. So let's switch to slicing. So if I take this one here and move it, let's add another one here. You can see that it doesn't behave like the previous mode. You can just shift the nodes. Of course, if you go far enough, it will compress the previous node. So if I move this one, it's just move this node. And it shifts the material while maintaining their original speed. And as you can guess, this is a very good option for drums and percussion. And we get three parameters in this mode. So fill gaps, turns the decay on or off. So if you have any gaps because you have moved the notes, the audio, then you choose this one to fill them. Now decay sets the decay time between the sounds. Since we have no expansion when using this mode, increasing the decay time helps with the gaps. And next one, slice length, which is at 100% by default. If you lower it, two things happen. First, you can no longer use fill gaps or decay. And second, each slice will be shortened by the value we choose. The reason why you might want to use that is to remove uh, the material that is right before the next note, also known as the pre-attack pre material. And if you go to extremes with that, then it gives this noise gate effect. And we will have a look at it a bit later when we quantize drums. So underneath slicing, we've got rhythmic. Now rhythmic will time stretch the material and loop the audio between the slices in order to fill the gaps. So this is a good choice for rhythm guitars, rhythm key parts, and upper loops. And in this one we get three parameters. So we have, let's go here, we have loop length. This will set the loop length that is at the end of the slice and will be used to time stretch the material. We've got decay. As before, it sets the decay value, but for the looped area. And we've got loop offset. You can move the looped area to the left in milliseconds. And you can go all the way up to 100 milliseconds, actually minus 100 milliseconds because we moved to the left. And that will prevent the pre-attack material to appear in the cross-faded area. So if you get uh, glitches while using this mode, play around with these parameters for a bit. It will be very helpful. Now the last two, uh, speed and tempo phone, these are great for sound design. Speed will play back the material, faster or slower, and since it affects pitch, if you make the note half in length, then the pitch will be affected and play back the note an octave higher. Similarly, if you stretch the note twice as long, it will be played back an octave lower. Technically, because it affects pitch, uh, it's mostly used in percussive material, but I would suggest that you use it on anything because sometimes you get some really nice accidents, happy accidents. And the last one, Tempophone, is a very interesting one for sound design. If you are familiar with tape, uh, magnetic tape that is, there used to be a device known as Tempophone that was used with the magnetic tape in order to manipulate either the pitch or the tempo of the recording, but not both of them together. So uh, if you try to change the playback speed uh, in the tape, that would also affect the pitch. But with this device, you could treat each variable individually without affecting the other. One of the uses for this machine was the creation of new sounds that had sonic and durational attributes that were normally impossible to create. And that is the same principle here in Logic. 
Uh, so if you're coming from the synthesis world, you will recognize the sound characteristics because the artifacts that are created are similar to those in granular synthesis. So we get two parameters with this algorithm. Grain size uh, will set uh, the size of the grains. Okay, uh, without making it too complicated, in granular synthesis we have what is called granulation. The process will take that process will take a sound, break it down into small segments. These segments are called the grains, and you can measure that in milliseconds, from as little from one millisecond all the way up to one hundred milliseconds. So grain size will set the size in milliseconds, and in logic it goes all the way up to 500 milliseconds. And they will either be repeated or played back in their original speed, and will also be cross-faded to create new compression or expansion. And lastly, down here, crossfade will adjust the crossfade length down to 0%, you will get hard artifacts, and the higher you go, the softer they become. So that's it for the introduction to Flex, so let's start working with uh, the polyphonic mode and go over everything about the Flex markers.